Good morning. It's a tall guy show today, so I'm going to push this up just a little bit. Thank you. Uh, the uh, hordes of middle schoolers have left us, which is uh, not the atmosphere we actually really like best here at the Connecticut Science Center, but might be more conducive to an organized news event uh, with our distinguished guests from Hartford HealthCare. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Matt Fleury. I'm the president and CEO of the Connecticut Science Center. Delighted to have you here today. And I suppose the pandemic has taught us to be more delighted than ever to have people here on any day. And indeed, they've been here, including today. And I think that's a testament to the progress that we have made as a society uh, against the pandemic. Amid the many questions uh, presented by an unfamiliar, deadly, frightening disease early on, uh, we all turned our attention to our health care providers. And this is a moment when I would not want to fail to once again thank uh, the health care providers in our community, including those at Hartford HealthCare. Uh, thank you, uh, Keith, and your colleagues uh, on behalf of the Connecticut Science Center. We appreciate that without your efforts, we wouldn't be able to operate the way we do today, which is only one example of the lifestyle that we've come to appreciate and value. We also, early in the pandemic, came to appreciate something that at the Science Center was not a heavy lift. That is that the real answer, rather than triage and help in, in the setting of, of hospitals and doctor's offices or your sickbed, would be science finding an answer for our society to live once again in a way much closer to that which we appreciate and value. And from the advice about wearing masks and sanitizing to ultimately the creation of a vaccine that is extraordinarily effective at protecting us, adults and now kids, against this disease, we can see that science indeed found the way. Early on in the pandemic, members of this team at the Science Center were motivated to express our appreciation for the healthcare workers who were helping us in that early moment uh, of the pandemic. And they created a, a giant heart like the one behind me. And it still uh, glows every night facing the east uh, from the Connecticut Science Center's highest perch and expresses that sentiment of appreciation. And as we think about what happened in 2020, it came to reflect not only our appreciation and regard for those who were helping us through the pandemic, it came to symbolize a sense of valuing one another in a time of social unrest. And further, that we at the Connecticut Science Center love science and wish for a society and work for a society that is inspired by and inspired to love science as the way towards a healthier, better future. And indeed, that's where we are thanks to science. And that's something we celebrate and we think the most excellent recent example of why science is so important to society in a very immediate, life-saving way, very careful, safe way, and we continue to do so and look forward to doing so going forward. But it was a long, long road for a team just like those in the hospitals and in the doctor's offices, wearing masks, greeting visitors, wondering whether they're infected or not infected, and taking great care of them, making sure we did everything possible to make this a safe experience. And indeed, our visitors told us, anecdotally and through surveys, that they felt that way and continue to feel that way. And that's why they're coming back and their kids are having the kinds of social enriching aspects of their lives that makes it worth being a kid again. So the message, love science, is something that we will continue to express in all we do because it really is our story and our, our whole purpose is to foster a love for science. And we're pleased to do so alongside great partners uh, who now, together with us, can say not only is it about loving science and its potential, but the actual production of what science can create is the vaccine that extraordinary feat of science that's now enabling us to return to the world as we want to experience it. And now that it's made available to kids 5 to 11 and then on up, uh, we're thinking, well, these are the kids who come to the Connecticut Science Center. So let's find a way 
to put a little joy in that jab. Give mom and dad, the caretaker, just that little extra incentive to say, you know, it's really going to be okay. And I'll tell you what, you come and we do it at the Connecticut Science Center. We're going to take you there for the day. You're going to see the fabulous mummies exhibition. You're going to see how the healthcare workers do their magic up in the Hartford Healthcare Lab. Uh, and you're going to have a great day along with getting vaccinated. So we are announcing that this Saturday, starting at 9 o'clock, at uh, 9.30, um, here at the Science Center, any child who is vaccinated by our partners at Hartford HealthCare on that day is going to be able to come to the Science Center for free. And if you're the person who brought them, you're free too. And we'll throw in a movie for you. It's going to be a great day. We hope to boost those numbers uh, of vaccinated children. And even if you can't make it that day, to use this opportunity to say how important it is to do so. So. We look forward to welcoming a great many people on Saturday here at the Science Center. We recommend that you go to our website and register um, because we do our ticketing by advanced booking primarily now, and that's the best way to make sure you're going to be in line and get that shot. And then we'll do it again on March 12th for the second shot. And this is going to be the Pfizer uh, shot. And uh, we're looking forward to a great day. Uh, not only of the normal things that we do here at the Science Center, but having our friends from Hartford HealthCare in the house, uh, administering in the most gentle and loving possible way the key to the castle, which is the life a child wants to have in today's society, notwithstanding the pandemic. I want to introduce one of the people who's been a real leader in our community in helping us understand what is happening in this mysterious, fast-moving, quickly evolving sometimes frightening situation that we have confronted over the last two years. Keith Grant is the Senior System Director of Infec Infection Prevention at Hartford HealthCare, and it's my pleasure to welcome here at the, him here at the Connecticut Science Center today. Keith. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's funny how we talk about the Science Center for kids, and then when I get here, I'm Super excited, <laughs> um, like just playing with these things. But anyway, uh, it's really fitting to have a conversation at the Science Center regarding where we are in COVID-19, where we're hoping to be within the next few weeks. Um, identifying the impact that science has had in this entire thing, at least, um, I, I, that's my belief. Not just from the epidemiology perspective and identifying, you know, working with the numbers, looking at predictive analytics and different models, but also the impact of the vaccines, the impact of now the treatments and therapies that we have, the prophylactic treatment that we do have. And um, I think one of the biggest statements that uh, can be made is that within the next few years, if we see something like this again, um, we will be more prepared. At least I do hope so. But I think the people that will ensure, the generation that will ensure that we will be more prepared are individuals that run through here all the time, right? And it is for us, and you know, Rebecca talks about this, it is for us to make sure that when we're making decisions, this impacts us as adults, and I can tell you in the healthcare system, it's been a huge impact on us. Um, and I believe this will be an impact in healthcare providers for a long time to come. I think, you know, PTSD within healthcare from COVID-19 will be something that we'll talk about for a long time to come. But I do think the impact that it has on kids is immense. Um, I have a seven, now eight-year-old, she would correct me really quickly. <laughs> I have an eight-year-old and a two-year-old and it, it's, it, it's, you know, from an infection prevention perspective, I'm excited to know how compliant, to see how compliant she's with with her mask, but as a parent, it's concerning that this is normalized now. This is like a normalized activity. And we know what, how kids socialize and the importance of facial expressions and so forth. Um, so I do think this is a fitting conversation to have in the right place to have it, and I think in the future of health, healthcare, future of us managing this pandemic and other pandemics to come, dwell within the lessons that people learn within these structures. So I. I appreciate the partnership a lot. In regards to true epidemiology at this point in time, I think we're in a much, much better place. We've decreased our rate exponentially over the last 
uh, few weeks. And I stopped saying the rates have decreased and I start owning the fact that we've decreased the rate because I, I think we've done it. So. <laughs> so I do think people in Connecticut have done a wonderful job where vaccination is concerned. We're still, there's still a long ways to go. Um, you know, one of the, we've also seen an increase in the amount of kids that are positive. We've also seen an increase in the number of kids that are not just positive but needing to be in the hospital. And unfortunately, we've seen an increase in the mortality rate. Within those numbers, we continue to see the efficacy of the vaccine. Um, you know, when this started, one of the conversations we had is, do we tell people to go get vaccinated or do we just talk about the actual science itself? And, you know, we, I think we settled on, let's just talk about the science and help educating people. And then afterwards, you start seeing the number of people within the hospital that are dying are purely individuals or mostly individuals that are unvaccinated. And then you start talking to people like I will my 80, my 90 year old grandmother, she would correct me as well. My 90 year old grandmother in that she had to go get vaccinated because I, I believed in the science and I, I see the numbers. And one of the things that I did this morning, I rarely take notes or write stuff down. Um, but this morning, like I ran some numbers and one of the reasons is, you know, if you see, saw the, uh, I think Governor Lamont's last address, he talked about the number of individuals that are in the hospital that are vaccinated and have COVID-19. Very interesting. So I think Eleanor sent out something that I still haven't responded to, so I'll respond to it. And I'll read just a review of the current data that we have. So this is the information of the last seven days of patients within our, our system, right? And keep in mind, we're coming from a high of about 580 patients that we're seeing through the system. So the last seven days, we've seen 124 patients admitted with COVID-19 uh, through Hartford Healthcare. From that 124, we've had 78 patients that are vaccinated. From the 78 patients that are vaccinated, we have nine patients that were boosted. From the nine patients that are boosted, um, five of those patients actually has COVID-19 symptoms, as in, there's people there that have broken legs that come in and we test them, we test everyone. Um, from those cases, we have uh, five patients that's received from the 78 patients that are vaccinated, we've had five patients that have received their vaccines gr less than five, five months ago, which means from a pure efficacy perspective, these are everyone else needed to be boosted, right? So throughout the numbers, if you actually look at the numbers, we have for patients that are symptomatic and vaccinated, within the system currently with COVID-19, we have 12 patients. So that's 12 patients from 124 that are now admitted in the hospital that have COVID-19, have a booster, or is up to date on their shot. None of these patients are needing critical care. None of these patients are needing to be ventilated. So when we look at the data, we talk a lot about data, it's very important for us to appreciate the true impact These numbers are numbers that we see absolutely every day. So again, I will start, I start, and I, I think it's a fitting place to have this discussion. The science over the last few months, efficacy is good, safety is really good. And this happened in a lab, this happened through the trials, and now we're seeing it not just at Hartford Healthcare, but across the country. I look forward to supporting any partnership that supports vaccination. Um, I do think at this point in time, you know, we need to appreciate a shift to normal, but appreciate what's getting us there. Um, I'm hoping, you know, the next few times we talk about it, it's not about a pandemic, but I'm, I'm looking forward to coming here just playing with the stuff. So, <laughs> um, any, any questions? All right. All right, thank you.